Nice melody, eh? Yeah. Nice melody, eh? Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> okay. I gotta text him before I get kicked out. Yeah, absolutely. So do you guys want to say hi and uh, tell me what you had for breakfast? Hi, I'm Ava. Hi, I'm Lily. And I had French toast and maple syrup for breakfast. With cinnamon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the best kind. Maple syrup. Get some level? Harry said hello. We need that. Hi. Mm -hmm. I had a cheeseburger for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. It made Marion's. Couldn't figure out what to get. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was just I was just teasing Richie. I was telling Richie he's the employee of the month at New Marion's this month. He's very popular there. <laughs> We're looking at his bag of health food that he hasn't eaten yet, but he ate everything else. Just on the corner of the desk. My health food usually stays in the refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> I wait until sprouts start growing other things. We're rolling. Great stuff. <clears throat> just uh, give me one second here. And you're getting the very first hit on us. Yeah, well, I'm not, not bad, eh? That's yeah. just, gotta have friends in the business. Ava, Lily, Perry, thank you for coming by. Well, always a pleasure. How exciting is this for you, Perry, to have these young musicians aiding in your work? Well, you know, it's interesting because we met three years ago, three and a half years ago, and I've been looking all over the world for spokes teams, and we found them right here in PEI. They were under our nose all along. Ava, Lily, how, how busy has your summer been first? Pretty busy. We've been doing Anna Gilbert almost every night for about um, four months, I think. Yeah. And what? And you've been playing beyond that. You've been playing outside of the, yeah. the, the play as well. Yeah. Getting tired? Probably looking forward to going back to school. <laughs> yes. Definitely. I'm so excited. So tell me a little bit about how you decided. How did you go about writing this song? What were you thinking about? Um, originally, it was a melody for another song, but then, um, so when we were nine years old, we did a youth summit here in Charlottetown, and um, it had a big impact on us, and four years later, we um, recognized that there was really no song for cyberbullying, so being, the, being us, we decided to write one. What did you think about when you put the pen up to paper, Lily? I suppose well, it's a keyboard now, I'm old. Yeah, well, we kind of had an idea of what we wanted it to be about. We wanted it to be about how everybody's worth it, the victim's worth it, the bully's worth it, everyone involved has a right to be worth it. So we wanted it to be a song that everyone can relate to and everyone can feel good after they listen to it. That's a little different, Perry, because sometimes people tend to single out the bully and point the finger. But you know, that's the interesting part is it starts saying, I'm worth it, and you can't do this to me. But at the end, it says, I'm worth it, and you are too, which is why it was so striking for us. So we were very excited when we heard it. When I listen to the song, it goes through the arc of a friendship. Is, is that what people, you know, 13, 14-year-olds are experiencing? Is that what you're hearing? Yes, definitely. Um, not so much us, but we have some friends that have been going through it. And we really just wanted to help them. Well, that's kind of where you, you write about at some point the friendship turns and all of a sudden... Yeah. What do you say to people when they're dealing with this? You, you must deal with it every day. We, well, we have close friends. Yeah. And we just say, stay strong. It'll get better. Like, um, can you ask anyone about it? Get help. Don't fight fire with fire. How do you hide from it, though? How do you, how do you turn it off? Um... Well, really, you can just, um, like, shut Snapchat off, like, all of the internet, like, you can get away from it. It's hard to do, though. Yeah. Yes. What are you hoping the song will do? Um, bring joy to people that have been cyberbullied, because it's, um, everyone's important, and I think when you stop believing you're important, that's when, like, trouble starts to kick in. So if you know you're worth it and the bully knows they're worth it, then I think that bullying will decrease. How long did it take to write the song? A week, probably. How do you guys work together? How do you, how do you, how do you come together to put the song together? 
Um, well, sometimes, like, I'll have a melody, and Lily will have some lyric ideas, or, um, she'll have a melody, and I'll have some lyrics. So you guys share it all? Yeah. Yeah? Any disputes over the words and, and things like that? Do you, do you spend a lot of time thinking about... Yeah, we write, usually we have, like, a rough draft, and then we'll write it and scratch out words and come up with better phrases and better words and just fill in the space. How do you feel about this one? I'm excited. proud of it, yeah. Yeah. What are you hoping? It, I mean, how far do you think this will go? Where do you see it going? Um, I'm hoping the message will get across to people and, like, hopefully everywhere. Yeah, and if it helps even one single person, that our job's done. Or are you hoping it'll do a little more than that? More than one person. <laughs> In fact, it's going to be the theme song for our new Stop Cyberbullying app, which being built on the island will be worldwide. And it, they're using music to make people feel better. So we just broadcast it in India to 20,000 teens who thought it was amazing. And I've been singing it myself in an embarrassingly off-tune way. <laughs> but I think it'll make a huge difference. And there is no theme song on cyberbullying, nothing that'll bring everyone together. We hope this will be it. And then all of the other music talent that isn't quite as good as the girls might pick it up and start singing it too. But what are you going to do with the app? What's the app destined to be? The app will be launched in November mm -hmm. and it's being finished here on the island and it's for kids who've been cyberbullied, their parents, friends of someone who's been cyberbullied, those who cyberbullied others and it helps them understand the steps to improve things, take things off of the internet and it has something called a power pack that helps them feel better. Their favorite music, funny cat videos, and this will be the first theme. And the girls promised more songs that will feed into it that other kids can listen to. Where would you, you want to follow this up with what kind of songs? Um, just like empowering people and helping everything we can to try to make things yeah, better. Yeah, from different perspectives too. Like maybe one in the bully's perspective and then one and the person who's getting bullied. Why is it so important to you to represent both sides of the, you know, conflict or both sides of that, that interaction? Because we've seen it happen and our friends go through it almost every day and we're lucky because we've never gone through it yet. Do, do, you, do you feel, I mean, do you feel bad for the bully? Is that, is that kind of, is that entering your mind? I'm just curious because I, I sort of want to get to this sort of openness that you have when you're writing. Well, yeah, I definitely think, like, the bully's worth it, and um, they've been through a lot if they're bullying someone else, so maybe someone's been bullying them. This is a family affair for you guys. <laughs> What's it like to work with Dad in the recording studio? He's amazing. He does our track and instrumentation, and he co-produces the song. How far are we going to take your music? As far as we can. Really? Yeah. Yeah? What's, what's it been like to hear that reaction? Did, now, you already heard. Some people are already hearing the song early. Yeah. Well, did, did, did you guys immediately get a reaction? Excitement. Yeah. Just plain excitement. Overjoyed. Yes. <laughs> so what's it like when you all of a sudden get a message from somebody who's saying, this, you know, I, I heard this and, and thank you? Well, we were very shocked and just um, thankful that they all loved it and that we got the message across. 20,000 students. Yeah. Incredible, eh? And we're launching a new website, IamWorthIt.com, and it's going to be available to your listeners before anyone else. Well, we thank you for that. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. Where can people hear you? Um, iTunes, I think. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. iTunes and IamWorthIt.com. Yes. And we'll get you all over Instagram. I think they deserve a Disney sitcom of their own, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. All of you. Thank you so much. That was great. We got everything covered pretty much? Yeah, no, great. Yeah? Really Excellent. Great. And we're going to play a little bit of the music on the uh, on the back end of it. Awesome. So people will be able to hear it. We'll probably play into it now today, right? Is that kind of... We'll figure something out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So that's great. And you guys, you're going into, what, eight? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Where are you guys, where are you guys at? Uh, West Rosie? Queen Charlotte. Queen Charlotte. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're amazing kids. They just are. Yeah, my daughter's freaking out. Eh? All her friends got moved to Birchwood. Oh. So she's, at, she's at Stone Park, right? So that's great for us because we just live up the hill. Yeah. But it's like we got a note the other day. 220 students are out of Stone Park this year. 12 teachers are gone and the vice principal 
I think you guys might have got. No, maybe you went to brunch with Mr. Smith. I don't know if you went to Mike Smith. And Kim Doyle's been talking about it too because Nicholas is not where he wanted to be. I mean, yeah. This is a real problem. Yeah, for Jane, it's just her friends. Like, she just, yeah. her circle of friends just happen to sort of be from, from that side of town, and it's, and it's kind of rough on her. And the thing is, when you're when you're an immersion kid, you know what it's like, right? You're with the yeah. same kids like from grade one all the way yeah. through, and like there's only like thirty or forty kids who are who are taking immersion, you know, all the way through, and they sort of broke them up. So wow. that's kind of tough when you're there. Yeah. So she's, so she's doing French immersion. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. she's kind of anxiety ridden. We we need stuff. French speakers for this app. So oh, I yeah? talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. The little kids are the voices. It's a huge app. It's being built programmed in India for us oh, yeah. as a volunteer effort from this huge guru there. Right. And it's like a $200,000 app. And then, uh, but all of the content's coming from the island. Oh, really? Kids' voices and different things. So yeah. we should get your daughter involved. Yeah. And it'll be very international. In the end, we'll be doing different language versions. Really, eh? Yeah, she's super sweet. And totally free. Totally free. Always no ads. Yeah, that's the way to go. You know? So but tomorrow? You know, I look good. Eh. Gotten skinnier? No. 